And well, your, impression supposedly of, your impression of the... Well, yeah, uh, uh, one, yeah, one type of... W one uh, sect of Christianity's interpretation of those yeah. books. And your impression of the film was? Well, I... Mean, I what, you, what little you could hear of it... Uh, what little of it that I picked up. all of our heckling? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, what was interesting was that it didn't really seem to pay a whole lot of attention to... Well, first off, I, I, I had read upon its original release that even the authors of the books were disavowing the film. Really? Yeah, Tim LaHaye hates the film. Really? Yeah, he says they, well, the film tossed out a lot of what he, they consider to be the more interesting plot elements from the book. And um, it altered the <laughs> ending, apparently, of the book. Uh, well, the world doesn't get destroyed? <laughs> well, no, it's just, uh, it's, it, the book is um, apparently, from what I've only read reviews of it, but I, I might actually just one day read Left Behind just to see what it's all about. Uh, yeah. But the, um, apparently the book ends with the, the main characters getting together and deciding they're going to form the thing called Tribulation Force, which is going to be their little commando squad that's going to go out and, force. you know, and, yeah, and uh, we'll Harry the, the Antichrist, yeah. But um, <laughs> anyway, though, what, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the impression that I got from watching the film was that it's one of these, it, it, it's one of these movies that is, it's like a cable movie. You know, it's 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 clearly shot on on very minimal resources, which is not in and of itself a problem. But they just didn't do anything sort of creative or resourceful with what limited resources they had. It's one of these films where people sit around tables and talk about what are we going to do now? Well, maybe we ought to do this. But if we do this, then that might happen. Well, what do you think we ought to do? Well, I think we ought to do this. But we know we can't do that because the guys know that we're going to do this. Well, but we've got to do this Bible. Yeah, but we've got to do something. <laughs> You know, so it, there's a lot of long sitting around and talking scenes. Uh -huh. There's lots of sitting around staring at the computer monitor scenes. Yeah. You know, which, which are just no never... No action. Yeah. No drama. Yeah. I think that you, you had like one scene with a car explosion that I saw. You had yeah. one scene where like one character was sh sort of shot out from afar by an assassin who then just sort of went off. You know, but they didn't really do anything. He got shot at. He got shot at, right. Yeah. He didn't get hit. I did notice yeah. that they, uh, uh, I guess, uh, out of... Out of um, Puritan ideas about violence in films. They, the 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 actual gunplay in uh, the the shots fired by the Antichrist yeah. in the UN were like off camera. Yeah, you didn't so actually you didn't, see. You like, need to see. Uh, uh, yeah. the, there was there was two killings by the Antichrist with a handgun. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is the the yeah. son yeah, that's of like the Satan needs to use a gun. Firearms. Well, well, Why didn't you just like open his gaping maw and breathe flame on them? Well, what something? was about it was that first. Well, first off, that the, special effects. That scene was all thing. too reminiscent of like that scene in um, the Untouchables, where De Niro is playing Capone and he's walking around the big dinner table with all his mob bosses, <laughs> and he says, "Well, I need to teach you guys a lesson." And he beats like one of the guys to death with a baseball bat there, yeah. and just to teach a lesson. And here you have the Antichrist shooting two of his. I guess they were ministers or something in the UN. Because and and, and were, this no, was like they the one guys they were like the industrialists or something. Oh right, who, him up. Yeah, and, and then he turned. That's on like the one scene that, in the film that had the potential to like really create dramatic tension, but they blew it because it was all handled in this unbelievable manner. It's like what is he? He's supposedly mind controlling everyone in the room, uh, so that they don't do do so that they don't do anything to stop him. Right, you know, and it's just. Um, so it just wasn't done by people, I think, who know how to put together um, cinematic suspense hmm. properly. Well, enough about that. Yeah. How about some news? It sucked. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we know. So, it's not impossible to make good Christian films. You know? Isn't it? I'm, I'm, well, I mean, you could all... You know, Ben-Hur was cool. That's true. You know, so, but you've got to get real filmmakers doing it. Okay, here we go. Uh, today's news, folks. Hi. Um, Let's see, here's a bit of science news uh, from last week that I didn't manage to get in, but I think it's still uh, important, so I'll tell you about it. Key elements of theories about how the universe expanded and developed after the Big Bang have been confirmed by data from high-flying balloons and from instruments operating in Antarctica, scientists say. The instruments looking deep into the universe were able to det detect minute ripples and distortions in energy patterns within the cosmic microwave background, a faint glow left over from the immense heat of the Big Bang. A concept called the inflation theory holds that these irregularities, enlarging over time, led to the formation of all the big structures in the universe, galaxies, stars, and planets. The new findings lend strong support to the inflation theory. Researchers believe the data also support the idea that ordinary matter, of which planets, stars, and even people are made, accounts for only about 4.5% of the universe's total mass. The rest of the energy in the universe is attributed to cold dark matter, which cannot be easily detected, and to a force called dark energy, which is thought to be causing galaxies to separate at a faster and faster rate. 
Is that what they're calling it now? Dark energy? I like the sound of it. Uh, data from the experiments <laughs> support the notion that the universe is flat and not curved, an idea that would affect the path taken by light streaking across time and space. A hmm. uh, quick little uh, art, uh, report here from um, China. They've uh, found a massive slab of rock near the Great Wall, which is actually a section of ocean floor dating back two and a half billion years. Um, this is uh, lending uh, some credence to the idea that maybe plate tectonics has been going on a lot longer than we thought. A discovery of the so-called Dongguanzi Ophiolite pushes back by 500 million years the known beginning of plate tectonics and suggests the process has been going on since Earth's infancy. And Ophiolite is a distinctive complex of rock layers created when the Earth's tectonic plates are pulling apart and magma from deep inside the planet pushes through to the surface. So just, you know, more information to let the creationists know that science just does not support their position yeah. in any way. And here's something about our religiosity around the world. Uh, Western Europe, home of the world's biggest religious denomination, the Roman Catholic Church, and the birthplace of most major Protestant faiths, has largely turned its back on religion. It now has, uh, quote, one of the least religious populations in the world, noticed the Dutch sociologist Nan Kirk de Graaf. In Britain and France, less than 10% of the population attends church often as once a month. In Scandinavia, the handsome high-steepled churches that mark every city and village attract less than 3% of the people. In Amsterdam, the Dutch Reformed hierarchy is converting churches into luxury apartments to pay its bills. <coughs> uh, it's a secular age, sighs Canon Michael Chandler, vice dean of the cathedral. There, in one sense, Europe's loss of religious faith poses a striking contrast to the situation in the United States. Depending on how the question is asked, up to 95% of Americans say they believe in God. In much of Western Europe, the figure is closer to 50%. The public re religiosity that is part and parcel of American life is rarely seen here. The only televangelists on European screens are piped in via cable from Newport News, Virginia, and Houston. <laughs> <laughs> Europeans tend to be surprised or amused when U.S. politicians end a speech with the words, God bless America. Quote, when they hear that, the intellectuals break out in a little smug smile, says Jonathan Friedland, a columnist with London's Guardian newspaper. It's almost impossible to imagine a prime minister saying, God bless Britain or God bless Sweden. And then uh, it goes on to talk about how um, America's public... Everybody knows Jesus was an American. Yeah, everybody's public display of religion uh, that uh, we have in America doesn't really seem to be making a difference in how our our societies are better or worse. Uh, points out that, you know, we'll put up billboards here in America saying, <laughs> you know, Jesus loves you and National Day of Prayer and stuff, but our murder and rape and violent crime rates are so high that they're just, I yeah. mean, Europeans are just shocked. Uh, so As um, well they should be. So, uh, just, just uh, some interesting... Um, Interesting information there, but well, that's on the subject of atheists overseas. Right, uh, a oh, prominent, yes. a prominent British atheist, author mm. Douglas Adams, author of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series right. of books, uh, has just recently died, and here with some personal commentary on that subject is our own producer uh, Russell Glasser. I experienced a uh, brush with greatness in 1996. Um, I attended the SIGGRAPH convention, which is a yearly convention on computer graphics, and the keynote speaker was Douglas Adams. Uh, Douglas Adams, of course, as Jeff just said, is, uh, was the author of the enormously popular uh, book series, the wrongly named trilogy, which had five books called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, when Douglas Adams spoke on stage, um, he bounced into the room, he was just full of enthusiasm, and he was every bit as witty uh, in person as he was in his writing. Um, he uh, he uh, showed a great enthusiasm for his topic, um, he, he threw in all kinds of jokes, and he was an extremely warm, open, and unpretentious man, so much so that he was willing to give out his private email address to a crowd full of thousands of people. Um, I grew up on Douglas Adams' book books. I first read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when I was a preteen, and uh, I loved his writing because uh, I think he and I shared a lot of the same values. Um, he, wa he approached everything in an extremely humorous way. Uh, he loved to play with ideas. Uh, he, he would pepper his books with little strange twists on on things like time travel and parallel universes. He had a genuine regard for science. 
Um, and uh, he was an atheist. And a lot of people don't know that, that uh, he was very much an atheist because, as he said in an interview with the American Atheists a couple of years ago, um, it just doesn't come up very much in England. And furthermore, he spend, spent a lot of his time with his friends who were mostly scientists, and uh, being, <laughs> being an atheist was more or less a given. Um, I think that the world has lost a very great thinker as well as a very funny man. And I would like to do a short reading of something that he wrote in the restaurant at the end of the universe. I'm not sure if this is the way that he would want, <laughs> if this is the most ideal thing for him to be remembered by, but I think this is a very good representation of his writing and uh, a clue to his atheism. Uh, the scene takes place in the restaurant at the end of the universe, which is a restaurant where extremely wealthy clientele can travel forward in time, protected by a time bubble, and watch the universe explode around them while they eat. And uh, toward the end of this, of this section, uh, the following thing happens. At the back of the restaurant, the stony-faced party from the Church of the Second Coming of the great prophet Zarquan leapt ecstatically to their feet, chanting and crying. Max blinked in amazement. He threw up his arms to the audience. A big hand, please, ladies and gentlemen, he hollered, for the great prophet Zarquan. He has come. Zarquan has come again. Thunderous applause broke out as Max strode across the stage and handed his microphone to the prophet. Zarquan coughed. He peered round at the assembled gathering. The stars in his eyes blinked uneasily. He handled the microphone with confusion. Uh, he said, Hello, uh, look, I'm sorry I'm a bit late. I've had the most ghastly time, all sorts of things cropping up at the last minute. He seemed nervous of the expectant odd hush. He cleared his throat. Uh, how are we for time, he said. Have I got just a mint? And so the universe ended. Uh, <laughs> Douglas, I wish you had just <laughs> just another minute to tell us about your universe. We'll miss you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Russell. Yes, very much. If I might read uh, another short quote from Douglas Adams, just to uh, make absolutely certain that the man was an atheist. Oh, okay. From oh. an interview, Mr. Adams, you've been described as a radical atheist. Is this accurate? Answer, yes. I think I use the term radical rather loosely, just for emphasis. If you describe yourself as an atheist, some people will say, don't you really mean agnostic? I have to reply that I really do mean atheist. I really do not believe that there is a god. In fact, I am convinced that there is not a god. I see not a shred of evidence to suggest that there is one, etc., etc. It's easier to say that I am a radical atheist just to signal that I really mean it and have thought about it a great deal, and that's an opinion I hold seriously. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, we don't need to be sitting here making this huge, huge deal about how Douglas Evans was an atheist, because he never did. To him, it was just a natural way to be. It, well, yeah, but he was from Britain. Right. Here yeah. in the United States, where 95% of us are still believing in this God thingy, right. um, it's important to point out that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that there are a lot of people who are not like that, that it's okay to not be like that. Right, yeah. A successful author, a, a, a well-spoken uh, uh, person with a lot. He, he was he was concerned about the environment and active yeah. in projects to uh, protect endangered species. And you can be a a perfectly good person, well, yeah. a reasonably good person. There's nobody perfect, well, well, yeah. and and not believe in any gods. And that I think is the point. Yeah, yeah I mean, he had this, he had a genuine aw sense of awe about the universe. And, I mean, you can de detect that in his books, even though he's making fun of everything. Underlying it is this genuine sense of amazement at just how big everything is and how vast and how there's so much that we have left to yeah. know. Yeah. And that's really what comes across in his humor. So I think that we just need to remember him as a very funny man. Uh, this is a live call-in show. We got the number up there if you have any comments for us. Um, I'm going to move on to my Rapture Report, yeah, do which that. I, yeah. mm -hmm. which might I be, have uh, skipped recently. Um, now, uh, the ra Rapture Report is where we let you know about the impending 
uh, imminent arrival of the apocalypse okay. over and over and over again, <laughs> and over and over and over again, its subsequent failure to uh, apocalize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if that's even a word. Uh, well, it is now. Uh, let's see. Uh, and, and just to make this more interesting, since... Uh, uh, now that we're past the year, the, the start of the year 2000. It's slowing down. And, e and even significantly past the year, uh, start of the year 2001. The uh, predictions have started to slow down back to a normal level mm -hmm. of only a couple a week. Right. And um, in order to make this more interesting, I thought that we could maybe take a look at, in addition to to think to things that were definitely predicted for a certain certain time right. and that then subsequently failed to happen but also look at uh uh rapture predictions that were just uh, just said to be happening soon soon yeah, right just sort of soon so covering where, their options yeah, yeah where the person making the prediction doesn't actually you know uh stick their neck out <laughs> or take a stand mm -hmm. they just blurt out that oh x is gonna happen anytime now and uh and of course, they're you know religious people. And the perennial question is, what do they get out of it? Well, <laughs> could be any number of things. It depends on who it is. Uh, yeah. When you're Ronald Reagan, uh. you get a whole bunch of votes from neoconservatives. Yes. Ronald Reagan, in a 1980 interview with Jim Baker, said, "We may be the last generation. Well, excuse me. We may be the generation that sees Armageddon." Uh. Before that, in 1971, mm. Reagan commented to James Mills regarding events in Libya, quote, For the first time ever, everything is in place for the Battle of Armageddon and the Second Coming of Christ. Obviously, Reagan thought that the end would come soon. soon. That's yeah. soon after 1971, which is, of course, 30 years ago. And soon after 1980, which is still um, 19, uh, 21 years ago. 21 years ago. Uh, and to think that a man with apocalyptic delusions like that had his finger on the nuclear button for in our country eight for years. eight years. Now, I don't have any quotes from uh, <clears throat> from our, our new fine president of no. the United States. But I, think he's I wouldn't be too surprised if he thought something yeah. similar. I remember the 80s. As, I, mean, I wasn't alive like in the early 60s when we were like duking it out with Cuba and Khrushchev and all of that. But I do remember the 80s as being a pretty scary period. I mean, you, you seriously thought about, man, what if this all just blew up tomorrow? You yeah, know, you know. but that would be because, if there was a reason to think that, it was because of what was actually happening. Well, right, yeah, that's And what not I'm saying. because of myths written down in a oh, musty old <laughs> book by... Uh, musty old people. By musty old people who've been <laughs> out in the sun too long. Now, yeah. on to uh, uh, specific rapture failures. But I'm just saying, Reagan was our last really scary president. Well, I think. we got a brand new one. Well, Relax. Yeah, no, I've seen he's the last one. Yeah. This, <laughs> Before this. Yeah. This Can guy. I do my rapture report? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> try, try to lighten the mood. We've already uh, bummed everyone out by talking about Douglas Adams being dead, and now we're into nuclear war. I'm just trying to, oh well, not depress everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah. April lovers. 16, on April 16, 16 on, in a post by, uh, on the Five Doves website, hmm. Bill Singleton presented what we can only assume was intended to be evidence for his position that the rapture would occur on Easter weekend. 2001, uh. Uh, and uh, that didn't happen. No, I guess not. April 24, a group called the Lord's, Lord's Witnesses have kindly figured out the true Bible code for us. Oh, there's another one. Apparently, the UN will take over the world sometime between March 26 and April 24 of this year. <laughs> no one will be able to buy or sell, sell anything without UN authority after May of this year. Well, mm. they, they still have a chance for that to happen, oh, but yeah. since there, there it wasn't the takeover, it hardly makes any difference. Hard. And a worldwide famine will begin in September. Well, we'll get back to you when those other bits of that yeah. prediction It's fail. kind of hard for even the UN to pull something like that together in two weeks. But. And do you notice how that was like the core of those stupid, that stupid movie? That, that, that was, yeah. The stupid this whole we weird saw. political paranoia about, you know, they're all going to take over and and, and and no one can buy or sell. There's there's some, there's this weird economic paranoia. And worse, if we just get spin off now on the subject of, of apocalypse. Go for it. Uh, even worse, what really, really galls me about these apocalyptic claims about mm -hmm. the Antichrist and mm -hmm. the two movies I've seen about it, this one and also um, the... Uh, Omega Code. The Omega Code, right. Yeah. Is that the Antichrist, right, mm -hmm. that you can tell the Antichrist 
because he's the guy who's got the technology to actually solve really serious world problems. Yeah. That's how you know that he's completely evil. Because he's doing good stuff. He could, because he's actually doing good stuff. But it's all a, it's all a front, you see, for his evil, dark, uh, sinister Yeah, plan. it's the it's that the thing is they've got this dark, creepy story about how the world is about to end, mm -hmm. and so. Anything that makes it look like it's not about to end clearly must be the work of Satan. <laughs> oh, that really, really galls me. Yeah, anybody who's doing good things for people who isn't a Bible-believing conservative Christian is actually has evil motives. Okay, we have a couple of calls. Callers, please, please stay on the line. We'll be right there. Hang on. Uh, let me get to the uh, through these other ones just quickly. On right May fifth. Gabriel of Sedona, a guru of the New Age doomsday cult Aquarian Concepts Community. I love that name. <laughs> located in Sedona, okay. Arizona, foresees the destruction of humanity between May 5th, 2000 and May 5th, 2001. Uh. Only people faithful to the cult will be saved from this destruction by the UFOs. <laughs> now, why would anyone join a doomsday cult? I mean, someone came up to you and said, Hi, you want to join my doomsday because cult? Because they know they got no problems after a certain day. <laughs> yeah. It's like, me, as far as I'm concerned, these pe people's problems are just starting. Yeah, the end of the world. Oh yeah, that sounds fun. Where do I pay my dues? Okay, yeah. now here's a couple that are that are supposed to be hap coming up here in, uh, I guess, oh. a couple of weeks. Yeah, okay. May 28, David Parker, also known for some reason as Caps, has latched onto the story of the baptism of fire in Acts 2 and somehow mm -hmm. transformed it into a potential date for the rapture at Pentecost of 2001. Okay, oh, and also on the same date, the indefatigable Marilyn Adji, oh. whose rapture predictions have failed time and time again, has now pinpointed the exact has now pinpointed <laughs> the exact date. <laughs> She'll get it right after being wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong uh, for the beginning of the tribulation. She insists that the rapture, rapture will happen sometime before May, May, May twenty eight. So there you uh, have it. Now yeah, there's, there's more, but let's, feel, averages let's we'll, get to some callers. We'll get her to. Uh, ah. Those are the. Now what order are those in? Are those the are those numbers the f phone lines? Okay, gotcha. Okay, so we'll. And just do let's go to. Rachel, Ooh, that's loud. Hello, Rachel. You're. We're getting some feedback here. Rachel, you there? Uh, I think we. Oh, may that's have. three. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Let's try. Rachel. Yes. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Sorry, How my fault. Doing? No problem. No Hi, problem. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? We're good. Right. Okay, got, just got a quick question for you guys. As okay. the atheist community of Austin, could you guys like define for me exactly what you as atheists believe? Uh, it's it, really atheism is just defined by what we don't believe. Okay. So what, what? What we don't believe is that there are any gods. Okay. So what's your evidence for that? Uh, our uh, you don't you don't you don't require evidence for adopting uh, for refraining from belief in something that isn't proven. So the reason why we don't believe in any gods is there's no proof that there are any. Okay, it's the same reason that people don't believe that there are, uh, you know, pixies living amongst us. Because we don't see any. Right, but there's no evidence for pixies either, I mean. Right, right. and there's no evidence for gods. None. Right. Okay, so... Well, you guys there are... There are Claims of evidence. Yeah. yeah uh, round yeah, about, well, let, let's see what you have to say about it before we go okay, off on a long spiel. Go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. Then... Okay, some people would point to design of nature and humanity. For yeah, they would, point would to it, to that they would point to the universe and call it design, but uh, there is no really good reason to assume that it is. I mean, That's okay. just an assumption, it's not evidence. Okay, so what's your assumption then on origin of that design? What, what would you assume would be the... Well, we assume that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, Mark. No. Mark. Okay. Well, um, well it, it depends on first off what part of your, what you're looking at when you're pointing. What are you pointing at and saying that looks designed to me? Okay. Let's talk about the human eye. Okay. okay. Let's, let's talk about the human eye. Um, the human eye is what? Uh, have we determined that not only is it structured backwards, with the light yeah, coming well, no, in? No. No. That's, that's 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 a valid that's a yeah. valid argument. In fact, there are design flaws in the eye which shouldn't be there if it was created by an omnis omniscient being that could okay. do everything right. But uh, that's really not the, not the issue. The fact is that there are perfectly reasonable uh, a, a perfectly reasonable sequence of of developments from simp simple light detecting cells all the way to complete eyes mm -hmm. that that you can you can line up in a row and say, well, yeah, this is a slight improvement on that, which is a slight improvement on that, which is a slight improvement on that, and in fact, we have we have instances of every single step along that path. They've yeah. been found. They've so, been found, but yeah. I mean... Yeah. 
See, there, there's... First of all, though, the eye assumes light. And without an eye, you can't know about light. So... What do you mean? The what? eye assumes light. The actual existence of an eye makes the assumption of light. Without... An assumption need, of light? Without well, light, there's no need is for there, an eye. Is there, in fact, light? I'm sorry? Well, there really is light, though. Right. But right? So it's not a question of it being an assumed eye, to exist. That there's light. It exists. Light exists. Exactly. It's there. Right. And it but has effects other than... You don't know that than, light exists until you have an eye. Have you ever had a sunburn? Yeah. Do blind people get sunburns? You don't know how you got a sunburn until you blind actually people, can see. Blind people know that there's light <laughs> if they've ever gotten a sunburn. Well, blind people know that there's light because there's people that can see. Right. No, 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 please. No, no. My point is that light has a physical effect entirely apart from whether we notice that it's there or not. Light has physical effects. It's an actual natural phenomenon that, that, uh, that, that has effects on, on living things and even on non-living things. Like photosynthesis right? It warms and stuff up. Exactly, but yeah. without light there would be no need for an eye, correct? But there is light, so what's your point? Not necess and that's not necessarily true. There, I in mean, fact, is light. It's there no matter what your opinion is about it. It's not necessarily true that there, true. without light there would be no need for an eye? Right. It is, that's true. It is not true that there would be no need for... It is not true that... If there's, uh, so what you're saying is if there's no light, there wouldn't be a need for an eye. If there is right. no light, there's no need for an eye. Yes, I would pretty much agree with that. Well, what you would have, you would have an organ that got you around, you know, sensory organ that got you around in different ways, such as these deep sea fish that live at the bottom of trenches 36,000 feet underwater where there is, of course, no light. So they have other means of finding their food, finding their way, getting around. Okay. Uh, bats, I'm uh, for example. you guys believe in an, in an evolutionary, you know, idea then. We accept right. evolution because it fits the evidence that we actually have. And okay. back on the subject of the eye, there's a fellow named Richard Dawkins who is uh, one of the world's leading biologists and zoologists. And he, um, he in fact describes this process. He, has a, a very, uh, he had a bestseller a few years ago called Blind Watchmaker, where in a sense he, he would agree with your premise that living organisms do exhibit design. But uh, his answer to that is that the designer is something called natural selection. Right, and but he, now, okay, let's talk about natural selection in the human eye. The human eye is made up of, you know, what, I think five separate components, and each one of those components has to exist in order for the whole uh, okay, eye to yeah, work. No. There are, in fact, there are, in fact, yeah. perfectly reasonable sequences of developments, evolutionary developments in the eye, all the way from cells that simply detect the presence or absence of light through c complete eyeballs. Okay, okay? but... Okay, you, you, can, you can work out... How, what the steps are that e where each is an improvement on the previous one, and in fact, all those steps exist in nature when we look. But each improvement has to actually improve the uh, organism's ability to survive. Right. And I don't see that in the evidence that I look at. Okay, mm -hmm. you you should go read some of Dawkins' books. Yeah. Even Climbing Mount Improbable <laughs> is the one that has that uh, that sequence of, mm -hmm. of eye developments. And he also points out that what we have, for example, right now in the human eye is an organ in which, first off, the light passes through the lens and the photoreceptors that are in the back of the eye are actually, well, they're not, it's counterintuitive in a way. I mean, the, okay, go ahead. Can you hear me on this? Amanda, it, why don't you go come and take no, this microphone? Hear, okay. Yeah, we have a comment from Yeah, because Amanda's read this extensively, but essentially the photoreceptors seem to be in backwards because you're, um, Amanda, how does that, uh, hang on, she's okay. miking up here. Uh, All right. <laughs> but, uh, and you're on. Yeah. There you go. Okay. The components of the eye, one of those components is muscle. You can't argue that muscle has no other function in the body besides being part of the eye. Muscles have plenty of function, and that's one of those five components. Okay, I'll All give you muscle, but what about the rest? All of those pieces have a purpose in the body other than as being a piece of the eye. But how, okay, can you explain to me then, like, let's talk about just the eyeball. Okay, the eyeball by itself, no other, let's just assume, you know, primordial worms, Please. an eyeball pops in, <laughs> in some genetic mutation. And how nobody is eyeball, saying that. No, well, in fact, nobody is saying that that happened. Okay, so what That is a say? red herring thrown at evolutionists by creationists to try to make evolution look silly. Nobody is suggesting that suddenly a thing got born that had a complete eyeball. Well, in the case of the worm, Nobody. what we do have is worms that can sense light. Okay, I'm sorry, I can really, like, barely hear you. Okay. In the really? case of the worm... Yeah, your, your mic is upside down, actually, Amanda. Aye. <laughs> Bad <laughs> development. Yeah, there you go. What we have Just in the case of worms is uh, an area where light can be detected. And the components 
of detecting light are useful in the sea bottoms because there are places where there is light but no sun. That was one of the most amazing things of the discoveries of the trenches, of the methane ice is off the coast of New Mexico, uh, uh, coast, coast of Mexico, sorry, not New Mexico, Mexico, <laughs> is that there are places where there are cracks in the Earth's surface, there are worms living there, the worms are phototropic, they're attracted to light. One of the reasons we can guess they're attracted to light is that light coincides with heat, and organisms do make use of the heat around them for their biological processes. So we have a reason why a creature would get benefit from having cells that detect light, even though these creatures will never be exposed to the sun at all. Now the human eye has a peculiarity where there's a blind spot on the back of the retina. It's where the nerves get into a bunch and go into the brain. And on the same planet we've got squids who have what we might call perfect retinas where they don't have that blind spot. And it's because the retina of a squid has the cones facing in another direction so that the nerves aren't getting in the way. Now if we had a creator, you would think that either there's going to be the same working blueprint for both animals or some really profound reason for human beings to have a place where we can't see. And there just isn't any such reason. And you would also think that the same plan would be used for both creatures rather than the squid getting the really great eyesight. Squids have better eyesight than humans do and us getting the crappy eyes. Why well, do we have, have the crappy eyes? Brain that let's could certainly let's help to func help us to function, you let's, know, let's help us to make assumptions about a blind spot that a yeah. squid could never make thank about a blind spot. Th thank you very much, right. Amanda. Um, and now in the as, as much as, as we are interested in the subject of evolution, I need to make the point that evolution is really not an atheist issue, right? Evolution is a science issue. And the fact is, I, scientists... I would totally disagree on that. Scientists... I mean, I, wait, now, wait a minute. Scientists, yeah. the people who actually have gone to, to school and learned about science and studied things, this yeah. is what they came up with. Go talk to scientists, okay? Yeah. They are the guys telling us that, from a scientific perspective, Evolution is the explanation that makes the most sense. So you would argue then that any educated person is going to be an atheist, really? No, or no. Or really no. We're okay. telling you, an evolutionist? We're, no, in fact, there are all kinds of Christians that have no problem with evolution. Yeah. That e evolution is not an atheist issue. It's just not. Yeah. You know, the only, the only reason that it even gets brought up on, on our show, for example, is that fundamentalists think that, uh, that there has to be this literal interpretation of the Bible and so it just galls them that there are people that don't agree with that. Actually, and really, they throw that's not... The, and they throw that at us. That's, that's really less of an issue, I think. Maybe for some, for some fundamentalists. Me, personally, I could care less whether you believe in evolution or not. I'm Great. more concerned about your, your, else, your yeah. assumption that you can believe that something doesn't exist Emphatically that that without, is simple. That, proof, something that, could, that is you know, simple logic. Yeah. Do you believe that there is an advanced alien civilization living inside of our sun? <laughs> yes or no? Do you believe that thing? That I random no thing that just came up the top of my head. What? I have no evidence for or against that. Right. Do right. you believe it? Do you believe it? Of course not. Neither do we believe in a god, and it's for the same reason that you don't believe in those in, no. the, in those things living inside the sun. It's because you got no evidence to show that they're there or that they're not there. We have no evidence that your god is either there or not there, so we don't believe. It's very simple. Well, it's very simple. You I mean, that's to ignore some of the evidence, but that's fine. You guys such have as it. such as if, such if, as, if I mean, there's credible such as the assumption, such as the unfounded prophecy, assumption that everything was for created. Example, what? Biblical prophecy, for example. Do you think aliens came down to Earth, you know, time traveled and... No, we think, that, we think that, p that human beings did the obvious thing, which is retroactively write, write stories to make it appear that prophecies came true. Despite the fact that we have dating that would throw a big hole in that argument. I mean, the dating? Dead what do you mean? What are you talking about? The Dead Sea Scrolls, for example, that they What's, dated... Which scrolls? The Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. What about them? What about them? What about them? The whole entire book of Daniel... Right. What about it? What, what, and what to say? Okay, what, specifically, what specifically was clearly predicted in an um, unambiguous way that then actually happened? Oh, an unambiguous there are way. In I'm fact, sorry. Well, there yeah. you go. So what is, go, it, what is it with this God? At, I want to know. Maybe you yeah. can explain this to me. What is it with the Christian God who cannot make himself clear? 
why is it that when he talks to a prophet, he never tells them precisely at this time, exactly this is going to happen? Now, you can't say he doesn't know because he's supposed to already know. Why, why is it always vague? Yeah, why does it always have to be interpreted and reinterpreted? But, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I actually made an <laughs> assumption here that, that we could talk, you know, in a in. Well, we're trying to get you to no. Well, but the, seriously, yeah. But we're, seriously, how do you explain that an, an omnipotent, uh, I, I omniscient first, being cannot make himself clear? Personally, I do believe that it's clear, and I believe that if you'll go oh, with an you open just admitted heart, a second ago that there are no it, unambiguous. If you're just going to keep interrupting me. There's really no point to talk about it because when you talk, I can't hear you on the telephone. I'm sorry. Fair, fair enough. Go ahead and make, say, your, say your point. I would say that if you would come with an open mind, with an open heart, willing to accept the truth, no matter what that truth might be, you could see clearly what is being said. That is... Oh. But if you come with a presupposition and a, and a pre-idea about this is what I want to believe, you're not going to see clearly. That's absolutely true. But you know what? We are coming at this with an open mind. I, I just I, asked you to explain this thing that seems really mysterious to me. Right? I, How I, come? I, how come there's all these uh, these ambiguous predictions? I don't believe and it's And when you ambiguous. can't explain that, you can't expect me then to go ahead and believe it anyway. How is that? That's not open-mindedness. That's dumb. I don't think that. <laughs> I don't think it's ambiguous. Well, it's, then, can you do you have a specific package? That's great, but uh, I don't believe that it is. All right. I'm well, sorry. thanks very much for your call. Well, wait a minute. I, mean, I just want to ask her one thing. All right. Go ahead. I'd like to, can one you, more thing. Can Can you read us? Uh, since Since I assume that you know uh, the Book of Daniel fairly well, can you read us a pack uh, one of these passages that is completely unambiguous? Okay. If you can give me just one second here. Sure. No problem. Oh. I need to to find some notes. There's actually a prediction in the Book of Daniel that talks about <sighs> the coming Messiah, and it talks about actual dates. I mean, and, you know, uh, biblical scholars, which I don't know how much credence you would actually give to a biblical scholar, no. have gone back and done the count, I mean, have, have figured it out, looked at the dates, and believe it to have come exactly, boom, right, right out to those dates. Okay. But again, you know, also what I would say to you is that, I, I mean, I, I don't believe it to be ambiguous. I believe that anyone that comes with an open mind can see it. Well, when we but just asked you for one, though, you says, hesitated. Well, no, she's looking it up. She's, all right. And she's, what, what it, the sense that I seem it, to get from you guys is that you want all your questions answered before you would believe rather than having uh, another can I, can I comment on that? No, I want to comment on that. You said it does require faith. Yes. Right. Well, what's faith precisely? Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not seen. There is no, ev there's no evidence okay. of things not seen. I mean, evidence is things you do see. Yeah. That is what evidence is. But I, but I want to talk more about that word faith, okay? Um, in fact, you check, I've checked the dictionary on this. There are a wide range of different definitions for the word faith. It covers anything from, well, I understand how the earth rotates as it orbits the sun, and uh, every morning so far, the sun has come up, therefore I have faith that it will do it again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't take very much of this thing called faith, right? Because there's plenty of evidence to support it. It goes all, all the word faith covers everything from that to, I have not a shred of evidence, but I believe this, I believe something anyway. Okay? I, and, I would and, not subscribe to that as a definition of faith, personally. I would not. You wouldn't? No, absolutely. Th that's clearly what's going on when we look at, at, at religious faith. Clearly, well, we're, religious we're, faith is way toward the end where there's hardly any evidence at all, if any, and people are just believing anyway. Yeah. Well, that's, the, thing that's is, the way that you see it, but I, I, I mean, I would disagree. I've, I've examined uh, yeah. the evidence for myself. I'm a college-educated young woman, and I, I just want to uh, make no it clear. mental problems so yeah, far. Well, no, I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not suggesting I think, that. No, I don't think people are nuts who believe <laughs> no. this stuff. I just think they're confused. Well, but or that, or, or no, I think that I think that a lot of what is going on also in religious belief and paranormal beliefs and beliefs like that is that it provides, you know, an element of sort of emotional comfort in life. You know, there's, yeah, there is that, that element. But it, you know, we're not saying that all religious people are just stupid. You know, I mean, some people um, don't. For one thing, critical thinking is not something that seems to be in vogue in our in our um, uh, culture. Also, the fact that it, uh, I think it's held to be rather politically incorrect if you just if someone talks about something that they believe and they clearly have some emotional investment in it, and then you question them about it. That's I think considered rather rude and. You know, uh, un yeah, un and so impolite. The, and so there and are so in fact a bunch of completely ridiculous beliefs that get that get treated with respect because uh. you're not supposed to you're not supposed to say anything because yeah, so it matters to that person. You're just being rude. Well, yeah. you know, the facts actually matter. The Absolutely. fact the facts matter. 
I would uh, I would agree with you wholeheartedly. I don't believe I don't believe in blind faith. I don't. Okay. okay. I, I just want to I just want to make it clear. That God created us with minds. In fact, in, in Isaiah in the first chapter, God says, "Come, let us reason together." Yeah. I so believe that God created yes. us with minds for a reason. So and it, so it shouldn't. So, uh, and on the other hand, on the other hand, you get people like um, Pat Robertson. No, no uh, older than that. Yeah. Um, um, hey, I'm not. I'm, gosh, darn. You know what, you guys? Uh, there's a whole bunch of names you could throw out, and I totally right. would agree with you on yeah, all okay. those people. Yeah. I would. Well, we're I, saying just, if, I just brought I'm up sorry. the word faith and the definition thereof because it's important right. to keep in mind what I, what that, I would say that, that, that when people say you just need to have faith, it can sound like it's no big deal. And I never but it also it. can be a really big deal, right? You can be making huge assumptions I when you have faith, or you can make tiny little assumptions. That's why I didn't say that you just needed faith. Because okay. you don't, right. I'm not going to say, oh, just, you know, just have faith, just trust. Have, I mean, I've okay. looked into this stuff for myself, and I believe that there are answers to those have questions. Have you got that passage for us? I haven't found it yet. I was just about to Okay, can I, I ask you, please, I, I don't want to just cut you off, but I we're on look, every I, week. I will look for it, and if you guys will give me your email address, I will email it to you. Uh, go, to our, go to our web page. At, um, yeah, the producer will put it up on the screen there. Or yeah. call us back. We're here every week. We'd love to talk with you more, but we have more callers on the line and we'd like to get I totally to understand that. I totally no, understand okay. that. And, 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 and we love these kinds of conversations, Rachel. Don't, don't get wrong that we're, like, attacking you. I don't, okay. I don't feel attacked. Don't yeah. worry. And, but, but if you take the approach to your religious beliefs that you say that you are, it, of course, shouldn't, shouldn't bother you to engage truth, in these kind of debates either. The truth doesn't fear questions, man. Not right. at all. I don't, well, fear, I don't our, fear those questions at all. On if our I website... If I wasn't certain... Of no. what I believe, then I would be afraid of questions. On our on our website. Oh, well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, hang on. Okay. But on our website, there is uh, there is a link that says email groups, and we have a mailing list that is called the Ask Atheist list. We have several lists that are just exclusively for unbelievers to talk to each other about things, but we have one specifically called the Ask list. Right, where you can send us email and we yeah. will respond. Yeah, yeah. I've, you know, I I hate to say it, guys, I've gotten some email from some atheists that, you know, really wasn't very productive. Yeah, yeah. well, we've gotten the same from Christians, so yeah, there we so, go. Well, we, 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 like, we, we, argue very much. we argue as civilly as we can. And, and okay, thank you very much, Rachel. You. We're going to have to move on. Thank Great. you very much for your call. Bye-bye. Uh, well, that, that was a good call. Sure. Had, you know, uh, let's go with... See if Nick is still on the line. Nick, you still there? Yeah, this is me. Hi, Hi thanks, thanks for, for waiting. Yeah, holding no, for so long. Thank you very much. No, no problem. What can we do for you? Yeah, I was like flipping to the channels or whatever, and uh, is my TV down low enough? Uh, we can't hear any. Yeah, feedback, there's no buzz so. or anything. We're fine. No. So, okay. What? So, yeah, uh, we're, we're, like, they're telling us to ask you to turn it down a little more. Okay. I'll, I'll you shouldn't need it at all once we're on the phone. Yeah. There. Okay. Can you hear What's up, man? <laughs> yeah, I was like flipping through the channels or whatever, and I saw you guys, and like it kind of like caught my attention. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to say that, like, you know, I don't think atheism necessarily has to be an enemy of religion or Christianity. Like to me, that kind of equates to going to say like a tribe in Africa and watching these people perform their rituals, and then, like, in a way, I think it's wrong to attack them because, like, these people don't know any better, and, you know, it, it's culture. It's like attacking someone's culture. Yeah. So, uh, I just wanted to say that, like, you know, atheism doesn't have to be a fr uh, an enemy of Christianity. And it doesn't that, have to attack. That, I'm afraid, from my perspective, is exactly this attitude I was talking about that's pervasive in our culture, where, uh, uh, you know, there are certain... There, there, there are certain beliefs that have some special immunity to criticism. Um, you know, what's ac what is, whether there really is actually a God or not kind of matters, right? I mean, especially when a religion is coming at you saying, if you don't believe and this God actually exists, you're going to suffer etern eternal torment. Yeah, I'm not, right? I'm not It really does matter. Either. And, and I, wanna, I don't want to point out that as, from, as far as I'm concerned, Christianity, by its very existence, is already attacking Absolutely, everybody is not a Christian, mm -hmm. with its with its basic assumption that we're all going to hell, right? And or in in whatever form the it, the individual sect imagines hell, that's or, that we're all doomed to this thing unless we join up with them, right? I mean, that's a voracious kind of attitude yeah. to have about every other human being on the planet, yeah. and when and when that gets taken into our government, for example, yeah, and we have government programs people are starting to try trying to set up mm -hmm. where where federal funds are going to be given religion. to religions yeah. to solve our social problems right i i mean that's not only is it a violation of the constitution but it's like just plain rude and unfair and cruel of christianity to assume that it's the answer 
right? That anything else can't possibly do us any good. You do understand that you live in a you live in a society, and it's not necessarily the most you know mentally evolved society. The people here aren't <laughs> Heck yeah. the most well, enlightened sure. or whatever. And but you don't make them enlightened by shutting up and never and never uh, uh, you know making them notice things that they say that are just silly. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I, I mean, agree, but yeah. like to attack like somebody's fundamental beliefs. Yeah. Well, here's 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 my point is uh, uh, we're not attacking them because they're fundamental beliefs. Yeah. We're attacking them because we look at them and and uh, a we think that it's silly to believe those things and we have reasons why and b the belief in those things has effects on more than just the personal happiness of the individual that believes it. Have you right? ever had a spiritual goes, experience? Uh, well, I would say no. Yeah, I, I would say I would depend. I would, fir I would first ask you what you meant by that, but I would probably say no too. Um, a spiritual experience. What I mean by that is like, and I'm not trying to portray myself as an extremely spiritual person, but I have had an, a spiritual experience uh -huh. to where you felt, er, like it wasn't even like you know necessarily God per se, but just the understanding that there is like another realm of existence and right. like things that could be called spirits or whatever yeah. exist. You know what? Yeah, there are scientists, there's a scientist in Canada that can put an electrode on your head, flip a switch, and make you feel that. Yeah, there's something to do with it's, brain chemistry there. Yeah, but there's brain chemistry going on. That is not proof that any of that stuff is actually going on. Let me, yeah, let me, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, like, you know, well, it's important it. to God. notice, it's important that. to realize that that doesn't mean that anything like that is actually going yeah. on, right? I mean, it really matters. Yeah. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm speaking from personal experience to where, like, yeah, I've, I've sure. experienced something and then evidence has been produced to where, like, it forced me to believe, you know, not necessarily in Christianity or attacking or, you know, like, but I understood that there was, like, spirituality and that thing that it does exist. That sensation. Sure, it's we not know sensation. that sensation exists. What do you mean? Have you ever gone to a church and seen somebody, like, seen the lame get up and walk? No. Or, well, that sort of thing is usually just uh, all play acting. No, but, I, I've uh, seen it, and I, like, I honestly yeah. believe it to be true. Yes, yeah, so, and you know for a fact that <laughs> oh, that boy. person wasn't set up by the minister to do that. Yeah. That's yeah, there ridiculous. have been faith healers exposed. Yeah. For I mean there was a there was a movie. Well, it was a comedy with Steve Martin which was based yeah, Steve on Martin an, movie. It was yeah. based on an actual case where a a a very major big name faith healer was exposed by skeptics who came in there with radio equipment and found out that the people greeting the 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 folks at the door were finding out what their afflictions were yeah. and feeding that information back to him so he could pretend like he was divinely inspired. But how can you say how can you say that like every single faith healing is fake that these preachers have like falsely orchestrated these faith healings and that every here's, single faith Here's some other here's yeah. some interesting well, statistics for you, okay? Um, the Catholic Church, for example, keeps records of the number of miraculous healings that take place at Lourdes, which I guess is in France somewhere, it's in France. right? It's a place where where, friend, where where you can go to supposedly get a miraculous healing. Yeah, I know about that place. Okay, now they, they, they investigate these things and they have their records of how many miraculous healings it's supposed, uh, are supposed to have happened there. Yeah. Okay. When you consider the number of people who travel to Lourdes every day, the fact is, the plain, simple fact is, you are more likely to die in an airplane accident on the way to Lourdes than you are to get what the Catholic Church considers a miraculous healing. Okay? Now, could it be happening? Sure, but there could be an advanced alien civilization living inside our sun that we just don't well, know about. Be. The time to believe a thing is after there's really solid evidence that it's true. Okay? And not before. Yeah, and my, my big criticism of faith healing, too, is uh, a couple. Uh, one of which is, first off, if these faith healers can really do what they say they can do and what they, I think, are pretending that they're doing in their, in their religious services, why don't these guys just get in their car, drive to every hospital they can find, and just walk through the hospital laying hands on people and healing them? I, they can, honestly, I think these people like enjoy the uh, mysticism. It's, about it. Yeah. There's another example. It's a tension, but well, I, I had okay. one more. <laughs> and the other, another life. thing is, there, has recent, there have recently been several cases, but mainly in California, there, no, Colorado. There is a case where um, now uh, parents are being convicted of manslaughter mm -hmm. for letting their children die, okay, because uh, they, and rather than getting them medical attention for such common ailments as diabetes, they're just leaving them at home, failing to get them, refusing to get them praying medical attention, them. and just praying over them. 
Now, and, and well, the children are dying. Even Christians, even Christians understand, you know, like, and this is according to the Christian thought, even Christians yeah. understand that God, you know, like, allowed man to understand medicine or whatever, and like, they attribute all that to God. So, like, well, they attribute everything they to God. That's to beside the, the point. The yeah. fact is, these parents were praying. <laughs> Presumably, these parents loved their child, their child as our, uh, you know, say they would love their child as much as any other parent in the world. Mm -hmm. But they, so they sat there and they prayed over their child fervently, and the child died. Have you that ever tells beheld, me. Have you ever beheld, course, beheld the course, no, let, me, let me add something else to what Martin was saying. I'm sorry. You yeah. know, hang on just a second. I mean, so were the parents' the, beliefs proven to be true by that incident, or were they proven to be not true? I would argue that the beliefs were proven to be not true because in spite of the fervency of the prayers, which I'm sure were extremely fervent, the child died. You know, you so like either either person. you have like, a situation. I'm sure that you understand. Either you have a situation. You can go on all day pointing out each specific case. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, we can go all day doing that. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the point and the point of this specific case is, either you have a God who was just indifferent to the suffering of this child. Mm -hmm. Okay, which doesn't sound like a very uh, nice God to me. Doesn't sound like a God who, even if I were capable of believing he existed, merits worship and love. Or you have a God who just, who, who wasn't, ca or, well, same thing, cap wasn't capable of hearing these prayers, wasn't capable of doing anything about the illness, even though he did hear the prayers. All those things don't point to a very nice God. Or you conclude that maybe there just wasn't a God up there to hear those prayers. And, and one more comment about that, about that case. Mm -hmm. yeah. The government, in deciding that the parents are, in fact, culpable for the death of their child, right, they are responsible and will be, and will be punished. The government is not saying you're not allowed to believe in a God that can pull miracles. What the government is saying is you are not allowed to let your, uh, your superstitions stand in the way yeah. of the health of another human being. Well, and miracles are kind of out there anyway, so, you know, like, of course it'd be easy for you guys to take me on this subject because it's a miracle <laughs> nobody has I, to I have one more example I want to bring up, though, and this, also, this one also has a point. Okay. Remember a few years there was a boxing match and Alexander Holyfield got his ear bit off? Oh, yeah. yeah. Remember that? Okay. Now, before that, uh -huh. uh, the, uh, the faith healer, Benny Hinn, mm -hmm. had treated uh, Alexander Holyfield for a heart condition, right? And Benny Hinn was going around claiming that he had cured Holyfield of this heart condition. I noticed that Holyfield is still missing that ear. Mm. If there was really... Real supernatural, you know, divine intervention coming in and fixing people's physical maladies. How come we never, ever see anything obvious like that? How come people don't suddenly regrow lost limbs we or bitten have, off I mean, ears? Never, all day long. never, ever, ever. No, this is my point. The only kind of healings that are ever claimed are things like this heart condition, which, as we know, can be misdiagnosed. That's true. You can't misdiagnose somebody missing a limb. Right? It's mm -hmm. obvious that there's something going on there that could be fixed, and these faith, he faith healers never, ever, ever can fix a thing like that. Okay? It's utterly ridiculous to give them the benefit of the doubt if they can't actually produce the kinds of results that ought to be within their power if there was something really going on like they claim. Yeah, there's no it's reason... It's ridiculous. There's no reason they shouldn't be held to the same standards as real doctors. Yeah. If they're out there... <laughs> right. If, if they're out there claiming that they can heal people of ailments and maladies and diseases, which is what doctors do for a living, and doctors have all of these very high professional standards that they have to... Uh, uh, um, rise to, otherwise they get sued, they <laughs> lose their licenses, that sort of thing, well then why shouldn't faith healers be held to the same standard? Why shouldn't they have to have their claims tested? I can't believe we're almost going to end this show with only two calls. Well, these have been good calls. What do faith healers have to say about this? Because I think it's wrong to, you know, how, how are you going to say tell you that what, they should you know, be able to do a, this and they should be able to do that? Faith healers to me are kind of like, you know, they're on their own, like that, that, that's what they do. And I'm not going to like you know, yeah. f sure, it's fine to question it, but I want to know what they have to say about it. Have you ever talked to a faith healer? No, but I will tell you this. When a doctor gets caught in malpractice, he gets punished, right? Mm -hmm. When a faith healer gets caught, you know, waving his hands around and claiming God is going gonna, is gonna to heal this guy, or claiming that God has healed some guy, and then two days later that fellow dies of a heart attack, yeah. they say, oh, that was God's will. No, no, well, yeah. no. These people are <laughs> taking money for a service that they cannot show actually exists <laughs> right that's just wrong but are you gonna say and that, we shouldn't are you gonna say tolerate that it what are you gonna say that it's never happened 
I'm going to say they cannot prove that the service they claim to provide actually works. How are you going to say they can't And like prove any that? other kind of fraud, we should not tolerate it in our society. Here's how they can prove it. Okay, get a patient. Blow Hollyfield's ear back on. Yeah. Benny Hinn, do your <sighs> blow on your blow on the on Alexander Hollyfield and have his ear miraculously regrow. Well, I'd be Jesus, impressed by know, that. Like Why Jesus doesn't he do dude, that? Ear got chopped off in the Bible. What? I mean, I mean, he's not like Jesus, you know, and that dude whose ear got. No, chopped he, off he in the but Bible he claims to have Jesus's he. What Benny difference Hinn, does it make? Benny Hinn Miraculous. explicitly claims that the healing power of God flows through his hands. As soon as, say it doesn't? As soon say it doesn't? As who can say as it doesn't? As I as say it doesn't. I say he's lying. Because he has never... Uh, why doesn't... Okay, get a patient out of a hospital. Somebody who is like in the last stages of full-blown AIDS. Take mm -hmm. his blood, get all of his blood toxins, get all of his readings out, get his whole medical history there. Take, him, take him with a staff of doctors to one of Benny Hinn's services, have Benny Hinn do his thing, then take him back to the hospital and test him. And, if and he's don't 100%, just cure one, cure hundreds of them, because yeah. there are statistics if he's, on, you know, yeah. uh, on you know, spontaneous remissions of all kinds of things, right? Sometimes it actually happens. And, and not because some healer laid their hands on him. Yeah, so get, yeah, get, a, get, I mean, a, get him to... I'm going to go so far as to say that Benny Hinn and all these other faith healers are lying. And they, they honestly do not believe that the he's power a of God flows uh, okay. through them. If he's not lying, he is deluded, and he is allowing his delusion to scam people of a whole bunch of money. But he's I'm making people right. happy. He is making, he's like, making like people, he's making people, people not go to doctors. What about Ms. He's Cleo? making she people not go to like doctors, and he's raking in cash. What? Do you believe that that has any factual basis? What? Ms. Cleo. He, you Who? Know, oh, that kooky woman on the tarot card if ad on Green No, her. of course not. No, Tell you what, uh, James Randi of the James Randi Educational Foundation, this is a guy who is a magician who Got investigates claims left. of the paranormal, has a million dollars for anybody who can come to him with proof of any kind of supernatural power whatsoever. And so far, he's still got his money. We have to let you go, because we're, we're running out of time thanks here. Thanks for calling. The thanks call very much time. for your call, Nick. Yeah, thanks for it. very much. Yeah, for okay. Bye-bye. We're here every week. Definitely. Call back. Take care. Yeah, uh, other uh, line two, I think. There, nope. there. Okay. No, he was on line one. It was just wasn't kicking. Wow, what a good show. <laughs> yeah, but only two callers. That's just not right. Um, but the, well, the more reason we, we need to be back to 90 for minutes. For a long, long, long time. And that exactly is the problem. We're letting people who believe this nonsense go on for way, way, way too long. But Instead of digging in our heels and saying, look, prove that what you ca claim you can do is really true, or else shut up and stop <laughs> taking people's money. Yeah, we're talking it's about Benny Hinn. Thanks for watching, people. Yeah. Yeah. Christians, we, we don't hate you. We just think you're wrong. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you next Sunday. See ya. Oh, it's me. Bye. <laughs> love. We love you, Austin.